the man behind the tower's foundations and hundreds of other buildings in the city is geologist Al Brand. No matter what type of project it is, whether it's a stadium, a skyscraper, or even a low-rise building, it all starts with the foundation. What's below ground at your site has to be able to support the structure that will follow. We're looking for rock. We're looking for this material. But we can't necessarily see it from up above. We see pavement. We see soil. We don't know where it is. The rock Al needs to anchor his skyscrapers is called Manhattan Schist. The secret to the city's skyline is exposed for all to see in Central Park. The rock itself is very hard. If we were to do a compression test on this rock, we would probably get compressive strengths on the order of 12,000 pounds per square inch. A normal concrete is between five and six, maybe 8,000 pounds per square inch. So the rock is very strong. Manhattan's schist formed 450 million years ago. A tectonic collision between what is now the east coast of North America and the coast of Africa pushes a 15 mile long layer of shale deep into the earth. Heat from the core and pressure from the mountains above cooks the shale into the hard schist rock. As the mountains wear down over millions of years, the schist becomes exposed near the surface of Manhattan. It's the perfect bedrock for anchoring skyscrapers. When we look at the skyline of Manhattan, we see clusters of tall buildings downtown, and we see clusters of tall buildings at Midtown. And if we look at the big picture of the geology underground, we see that same pattern in the rock surface. Al's team drill exploratory holes to map out the bedrock's exact location. We will retrieve core that looks something like this, which is the Manhattan Schist Formation and it illustrates the type of rock that is present at the site. Schist bedrock is the key to constructing One World Trade Center.